So I will introduce Olivia Bowles to come up and she'll do her presentation for you, which I'm so excited for you all to hear about. So thanks again for coming and welcome Olivia. <laughs> Um, hi everyone, my name is Olivia Bowles, and today I'm going to share my SEAL presentation with you all. Please wait. Yeah, it's a little wearing curve. Just a little about me. I, I, I go to Mother Crucial High School and I'm a junior. And I'm the co-president of the MRHS Environmental Club. I'm part of my MRHS's green team, which is where they basically create um, environmental sustainably things to do at our school. And I chose the SEAL program for a chance to create a change in my community in which I was, uh, I was given this opportunity by not only Kristen, but also um, from my environmental co-leaders that told me about the SEAL program and it was a great choice that I made. Inspiration for my project. So I really started thinking about what I want to change in my community. And the first thing I thought about was really the litter surrounded in Tim Falls. There's a lot of areas where people just throw things away and they never put them in those uh, appropriate waste bins. So I thought that was the first problem I could start. But then I wanted another aspect to my project. So when Kristen invited all of us to the Bayshore Recycling Project and Gary, the head of Bayshore, basically told us about the story of lithium ion batteries catching on fire when they're recycled instead of not thrown out. And it basically ruined all of their recycling machinery. So that really inspired me to do a kind of battery drop off at my school and to recycle them properly. So the issue with lithium ion batteries, as I said before, they explode when they touch water. So this can hurt recycling centers by causing fires and ruining their machinery as they get at Bayshore. Lithium, this is just an example of lithium ion. <laughs> this is just an example of lithium ion batteries. They're also known as rechargeable batteries. So they're in our phones, they're in flashlights, all types of everyday things that we see. So these batteries are then extremely dangerous. So I have a video. Let's see if this is. Oh, wow, technology. Okay, so this is them explode. This is one exploding. Yes, that, that's when it explodes. And then this is it exploding at a recycling center. So this is what happened similarly at station. So basically what I decided to do was I put drop off boxes at three main locations at MRHS, the main office, the library, and a location upstairs. And then I took these, all these batteries, the collection was for about a month and a half, and I took all these batteries and I brought them to Home Depot. So with my outreach to try to get as much people to drop off batteries as possible, we posted posters around school, this is the one that we used. Um, we had the fact sheet that was on the previous slide that basically told what the big issue with them, with the issue of lithium ion batteries and recycling batteries and how important it is, that was on that sheet. And then we announced it on our morning news and the MRHS environmental Instagram. We also told friends and teachers, and I'm really appreciative of everyone who brought in batteries. We got about 75, a little more than that. This is a picture of the Home Depot I went to, and this is a picture of the box with all the batteries in it. So it's a really great turnout for my collection. So then I wanted to do a little more hands-on part of my project as well. So I decided to host a cleanup and I first contacted the Clean Communities Coordinator, which is Mr. Morrell, and he was very helpful, but we couldn't really determine a location that was best fit that was in Tick Falls. So then through Cindy, I got Mrs. Chil Jill Pagosh's number, who is the Department of Public Works at Tick Falls, and we came up with a 
location that both emulated what Clean Ocean Action stands for with ocean recycling and keeping the ocean safe and also with litter and pitfalls. So we went to Turtle Island and these are pictures of the, of the island here. It's all of us and there's me and Ryan and Caitlin and then um, that's a picture. So we collected a lot of garbage and we had a lot of obscure items that were that would have really hurt the environment if they stayed there. We got a lot of cans, like a lot of out, a lot of alcohol cans, pieces of glass. We found a toy car, those pots, the water bottles, all things of that sort. So with all this, I did a middle middle school presentation virtually. I recorded it and sent it to my middle school that I went to, St. Paul's Middle School. This is just a screen grab of what. It looked like, and this experience of being able to know that I was able to reach these middle school students really was empowering for me. I'm really glad I got to maybe just get something to stick in their head just so that they know that they're the future of the environment and they can really do their part and do anything they can if they just make the change. So my plans for the future are to just keep advocating and keep, and keep doing my part to keep this environment safe. After all, we are the future environment leaders, and it's our duty to keep it safe for the futures on and on. So, thank you. when I'm not working. Um, so just seeing all the litter has always made me kind of mad, I guess you could say. So making sure those are clean are definitely very important to me. And joining the SEAL program, I learned about it from the Monmouth Regional High School Environmental Club. I'm the vice president or co-vice president. Um, and I liked that it was a group of people that were like me, high schoolers with the same mindset that we could share goals and achievements together. So my project was on pollin pollination and the knowledge of it. So I came up with the idea because I've always enjoyed planting and flowers and all that. They're very pretty. Um, so I wanted to incorporate kids because they're a teacher. Um, and I wanted to share my knowledge on pollinators and their importance in production because a lot of people don't realize just like how important they are because they are the thing that keeps our flowers being able to continue every year to grow and reproduce. So my solution was education um, and I wanted to help kids learn about the importance of it um, and how to maintain and grow plants so that they can do it in their future and continue it because a lot of people nowadays have a struggle <laughs> um, maintaining plants. So I presented to preschoolers, me to them. Um, so, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so again, I had a pollination presentation and then we 
mention marigolds because they are high pollinators. Um, and it was six students at the Monmouth Regional High School preschool, and it was a 30 minute lesson. And I followed up with them about three times to make sure they were watering them. And then at the end, we actually planted them like two or three days ago, we planted them outside of the Monmouth Regional so they could grow. <laughs> Um, so this is me presenting, um, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so these are just examples of, like, what it looks like. I made sure to use, like, a lot of graphics and colors, so I taught them what pollination is. Maybe you could tap on the thing, so. Wait, what? If you tap again, it'll do that, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So basically, pollination, a little lesson for you guys. It keeps the plants alive and it's the transfer of pollen from one plant to another. Um, how does it happen? Well, it can happen from wind and rain, but most of the time it happens just from bees or other pollinators growing from plant to plant, getting the nectar that they like. Um, and then this was a little bit of a graph that I showed them on how it works. So pretty much it's just the bee goes into the flower and gets the pollen grains and brings it over and brings it over to what's called the pistil for the flower. And that creates the egg and then that goes into the seed, and then that goes into plants, and that's how pollination works. Mm -hmm. um, so this was us planting the marigolds. We planted it in an egg carton so that it was environmentally friendly. Um, and then this is just them watering out the following <laughs> days. Um, so the project achievements that I had was obviously it was enjoyable for the kids. They really they were able to pay attention. Was was like a fear of mine. I didn't want to like lose their interest so that was good um and then they also learned hands-on how to maintain a plant so they can carry that throughout their lives um i was able to spread awareness in the Tim Falls community because they're all from the Tim Falls Asian Town area um and it brought more pollinated plants to Tim Falls so yeah. Um, my middle school presentation, we weren't able to go in, but like Lily said, we were able to make videos and I'll send it in. And mine pretty much covered my whole project. And then I taught them other ways that they can get involved in the environment, how easy it is to get involved, no matter how big or small it is, every, everything helps. Um, and then I included some pictures from the, my presentation as long as like beach cleanups that I went through, you know, in action. Um, and so the SEAL experience for me was a lot of fun. I enjoyed coming here and talking to high schoolers like me. Um, also going to the Bayshore recycling facility, walking around seems really cool because you don't really hear about like the recycling aspect of garbage and all that. Um, and then in the future, I just hope to continue with the Clean Ocean Action community and continue with the events and helping the environment as much as I can. And maybe next year, redoing my project with the kids on my own. Obviously, and butterflies. Um, yeah, probably just what they kept just naming random ones. <laughs> Next. Andrea. 
So when you have transitions, I think just swiping or how okay. kind of triggered them. Like, yeah. Okay. So this is my project, just asked, which is my seal project for this year. Um, so a little bit about me. My name is Jackie Rogers. I'm a junior at Red Bank Regional, and I live in Little Silver. And I heard about SEAL through the Environmental Club at my school, which I'm a part of, and Mr. Hussey is here as our advisor. Um, and so my passion for the environment began in the fourth grade during an ecosystem project. And this was one of the first times that I really had any exposure to ecosystems and how the plants and animals work together. And for my project, I was learning about the Arctic tundra. Um, which specifically was very interesting because it was so interesting to learn about the biodiversity there and specifically the different kinds of plant life because it's so dry there and there's lots of permafrost and they, there's only specific kinds of plants that can grow in these conditions. Um, and through like becoming more interested in the Arctic tundra, I started learning about melting ice caps and a lot of environmental issues, which brings me into why I wanted to join SEAL. Um, I've always been outside and I love being outside and I thought this was a great way to learn to educate myself and to work towards educating the community about different projects that I could do to get involved in the community and actually help because before this I had wanted to get involved but didn't really know how and it seemed like a great way to actually be able to do something in a structured way that would help me to be able to help my environment and help protect the earth. So for my problem, I wanted to tackle plastic pollution, um, which is a big problem as there are microplastics and plastic getting into the oceans and soil and affecting plant life and animal life. And so specifically, I wanted to target plastic waste in restaurants. During COVID, me and my family started getting more takeout food. And over the year, I sort of realized that there were always plastic utensils that I was getting that I didn't need because I was at home. So I would just use my own plastic utensils. And I thought if I'm having this experience, there must be other people having this experience. So I wanted to sort of reach out to restaurants and find out like if they were giving out plastic utensils to people who didn't need them or if they were asking um, whether people needed plastic utensils. So my solution was speaking to restaurants and talking to them about just asking. It's sort of a very simple concept that more and more restaurants are doing as there have been plastic bans, but there are still lots of restaurants in the community that are still giving out plastic utensils without asking. So I wanted to go and talk to them about changing their policy in a sort of simple way, which would just be asking like those few words, do you need plastic utensils? And I spoke to Gianni's in Little Silver who had this policy in place already, and they found that a lot of people would say no. So that was sort of more into my project, saying that restaurants were seeing that people didn't need plastic and they saw a decrease in how much plastic they were giving out. And a lot of places were open to the idea. So as part of my project, I sent out a survey um, and I found that a majority of the people that I surveyed weren't using plastic utensils. 42% said that they didn't get plastic utensils when they got takeout and they didn't use them. Sorry, they didn't use them, but they got them. Um, and then overwhelmingly, people said that they wanted to go to restaurants that asked you if you need plastic utensils. So they are reducing their plastic waste. And then 94% of people said that they would like to see less plastic being used in restaurants. So there is a support in the community that I thought was really enlightening as part of my project, seeing that people in the community were supportive of using less plastic in restaurants. So overall in this project, I reached out to several different restaurants and places that gave out plastic. I talked to the Carvel in Little Silver. I reached out to MJ's and Ocean Cafe in Shrewsbury. And they were all very open to this project and they wanted to change their policy in this sort of simple way and just start asking people if they needed plastic utensils. So that was really rewarding for me to know that there were people wanted to get involved and help and just change these simple ways to reduce their plastic waste. 
Um, and that was great. And also one of the most important parts of my project I felt was educating the restaurants because even if they do make the change to not using plastic utensils, it's not as valuable if they don't know why it's so important to be reducing the plastic waste that you're producing. Um, so I think that was one of the most impactful parts of my project was doing the, the research myself and then educating these places in the community about the impact that plastic has on them. And it was great to see all the people that got involved with the survey and that they all wanted to see, or overwhelmingly, they wanted to see plastic reduced in restaurants and they didn't really want it if they didn't need it, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. So my reflection over my time in SEAL, this is my second year of doing SEAL, and I found that it is possible to make change. And people say that to you, they'll say like, oh, you can just go do it, but you don't really realize that you can actually make change. And it's not that hard and people in the community want to help you. And if you're experiencing the problem, then there are other people. For me, one of the most important parts of my project was seeing that so many people in the community did find this as an issue and we're getting takeout food and seeing that they didn't need these plastic utensils that were being given to them. Um, and then also it was such a great experience to work with so many dedicated students in high school who are interested in the environment and wanna help. And it's such a great community of people. And I learned a lot about communicating and outreach and getting different people involved in my project and reaching out to restaurants and figuring out which restaurants I needed to um, speak to. And a lot of people through my survey, I asked the question of which restaurants did ask for plastic utensils. So a lot of people in the community had great recommendations for which restaurants didn't ask for plastic utensils so I could reach out to them. Um, and then sort of what I wanna do keep moving forward is to keep making change. And I hope to be part of SEAL next year and keep building on the skills that I have acquired and keep making change for the positively for the environment. I actually went to a cafe and got soup on Monday and okay. they asked me for if I needed utensils. Oh, they did? Like, yeah, and I said, I really appreciate you asking. I said, no, I don't. I'm just going to drink it. Yeah, they told that's me, great. They told me that it was you. That <laughs> Did any of the businesses say that it, it worked for them too because it reduces their costs? Because they're not just, you know. Yeah, that's one of the things in my research. I found that like it does reduce costs significantly because obviously they have to pay to buy the plastic utensils. Um, so I didn't really talk about like how much they were saving and they didn't give me a lot of information on that. But I assume over time they would see saving yeah. in plastic utensils. Yeah, no, savings is great. So that's a really important component. Yeah. Good job. Okay. Awesome. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Olympia Flores Castillo and I'm going to be talking about my SEAL project. Um, um, I'm currently a sophomore at Red Bay Regional High School and I live in Red Bank. My father was the first person who taught me about the importance of keeping the earth clean and he also taught me to garden and especially plant flowers that attracted pollinators. Um, and he was the one who really sparked my interest in the environment. Um, unfortunately, a couple of years ago, he got deported, but as hard as the experience was, it made me realize that I wanted to get involved with the environment. And when I was in eighth grade, I realized that I wanted to pursue a career in environmental science. 
Um, that was one of the reasons why I joined SEAL. And I knew that by joining SEAL, it would be my first step in pursuing my career. The environmental issue that I that my project was about was reducing the amount of litter in red bank. As someone who has lived in red bank my entire life, I, my life um, I realized that there has been there has always been a large amount um, litter in red bank. Um, I joined the seal a little later, but when the first time I met with Kristen, I realized I knew right away what my seal project was going to be about. So for my SEAL project, I organized a cleanup in Red Bank. And with the help of Councilwoman Kate Trigiano, the Environmental Commission of Red Bank, and various clubs at RBR, I was able to complete my SEAL project. Um, before I could do anything, um, I met with Kate Trigiano, and she gave me permission, and I got approval to um, post my cleanup. And she invited me to, an, to a meeting with the Environmental Commission of Red Bank and the chair of the, of the Environmental Commission, Nancy Blackwood, offered to bring a gloves, vest, and the garbage bags for the cleanup. So I didn't have to worry about that. And uh, I'm part of many clubs at RBR, so it was very easy to get volunteers for my cleanup. And although my steel project is a temporary solution, it is important that we continue to organize more cleanups. And I presented to the Reverend Middle School yesterday, actually, and I presented to over 20 seventh graders. And presenting to the middle school is going to feel very proud and accomplished. Um, yesterday, I presented to the middle schoolers. Um, I made a presentation, I made my slideshow just showing them, about, talking about the program itself and then talking about my project and just showing them small ways that they can also get involved with and to always start early. And <laughs> after, <laughs> after my presentation, um, it was kind of like a last minute thing, but me and Kristen decided that after I was done with my presentation, we would let them know schools make their own um, posters, a call to action poster. And they were very creative and very good. So these are some pictures I took around February and March before my cleanup that took on April, that took place on April 10th. Um, that's it, just a couple of And then these are pictures that were taken on the day of my cleanup. And for reflection, for the reflection in the future, um, I enjoy my experience as a SEAL. It forced me to come out of my comfort zone and it forced me to put myself out there. I'm a very quiet person, but and it was very intimidating at first meeting with all these people and reaching out to all these people, but it made um, <laughs> it was very worth it at the end. And the SEAL was very worth it and has helped me become more outspoken. I plan to use my experience as a SEAL by educating and encouraging others to do the same. I will continue to stay involved with the environment and my community. And also, um, I hope to continue hosting a cleanup every year, uh, separate from my SEAL project. <laughs> Tell us about some of the um, artwork that the kids did. Is it, um, were you inspired by, did they get the message? Did they kind of make the connection, do you think? Yeah, usually um, getting the middle school's attention is very difficult, but surprisingly, they paid attention the entire time. And they seemed like they really enjoyed working on the posters and just collaborating with all like, their classmates. That's great. So great. <laughs> yeah, I shot the her project. And she had a ton of people there in Red Bank. So I just wanted to know, how did you get everyone there? 
Um, so after my meeting with the Environmental Commission of Veterans, um, I worked on my flyer and made a rough draft and then I sent it to them and got all their feedback. And once I was done with that, um, I printed them out, I hung them around Red Bank and then I sent it to school and got it approved and I was able to hang them around um, the school. And then um, I spoke to all the club advisors and just spread the word about my cleanup. And then from there, I was able to get volunteers. And then we also have some local residents join. Hi everyone, my name is Kate Nicholson and I'm here to talk to you about my SEAL project, which involves blue wall So let me tell you guys a little bit about me before I start. I'm a junior at Monmouth Regional High School, and I'm one of the co-presidents of the Environmental Club there which is where I learned about the program SEAL. Most of my advisors recommended I joined it. And what made me really want to join it was that I heard of Clean Ocean Action before, as I've been to some of the cleanups in Long Branch and in Asbury Park. And it really inspired me to join as well. I grew up at the beach all my life. So having going to the beach and seeing in person how much that um, having litter can impact our environment really made me want to help and save our environment and our, clean up our community around us. So let me get into why I chose reusable. So basically I chose reusable because I saw that waste um, produces carbon dioxide, which ultimately leads to global warming, having the emissions from breaking all the waste down. So that made me cho choose my topic. And initially I wanted to go more into my cafeteria because I saw that in my cafeteria that we had a lot of unnecessary plastics in our cafeteria. So like we have wrapping over fruits, wrapping individual utensils, but unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but the school solved this issue themselves just a few weeks after I came up with the idea. <laughs> so unfortunately I had to switch top, or not switch topics, but kind of turn gears and go a little more on a different scope, but also with waste, the US produces the most amount of waste in the world. So I realized maybe we should try to fix that. <laughs> so this led me to my project, Reusable Mammoth. So as you can see here, I made an Instagram account, which promoted the use of reusable items instead of one-time use plastics or single-use plastics. And overall its purpose was to show that, was to inform about the plastic the plastic ban so like with in new jersey now there's a ban where you can't use plastic ba bags in stores as well as other single use plastics so i decided to make this to inform the community as well as spread awareness here's a picture you can see of the account that i took a little while back and also on this account i ran a competition which is you can see right here which i will get to in a moment it is um it is about the so what I did with the competition is I had students and people around me who followed the account submit photos of their favorite reusable alternative that's eco-friendly for the environment. And so people would email me these photos and I would post them and have competitions where I had three categories, which was bottles and containers. And then there was bags as well as a miscellaneous ca category. So it was like clothing and toothbrushes and all sort of things. <laughs> she was a toothbrush. <laughs> and, and so basically people voted every day. We now have our winners and I would give them a sustainable prize, which is on the way. But here you can see some of the things submitted. We have cups, snackies, which has like, it kind of doubles. It's pretty cool. It has um, liquids on the bottom and it has snacks on the top. So it's like a two in one type thing. As well as you can see clothes here, you may be wondering how this is sustainable, but the clothes are made from 
um, other objects. So they are all like uh, upcycled fabric. So if you don't know what upcycling is, it's repurposing something to make it into something else. As you can see here, I believe this was a curtain or a tablecloth and the person who made this turned it into a, a corset, which was pretty cool. And down here we got a pot holder that's made out of plastic bags. So they just wove it with plastic bags. As well as you can see over here, we got rug straws and we got pants. <laughs> <laughs> so um, overall, we had 35 submissions on my account, which was very impressive because I only have 50 followers. <laughs> so I was really happy with that number and I wasn't expecting the turnout that we got, but I, overall, that made me really happy. Actually, I think we do now. Okay, so how can you guys help? So overall, please guys, if you get any takeaway from this, please just switch whenever you can to use reusable objects such as water bottles, bags, and then if you can try to upcycle, like as you can see here, this person turned a soccer ball into like a plant, um, plant holder. So Anything like that, like having upcycling does allow you to express your creativity. So I would recommend trying it and just like figuring out like fun things you can do. Like being sustainable can be fun. And <laughs> if all else, please, if you're going to use single use plastics, just cycle them and it takes two <laughs> seconds. And my middle school presentation, yeah, that's an awful photo. Like, <laughs> But my middle school presentation, which is linked here, if you guys want to watch it later, um, I presented to Tim Falls Middle School, which is the middle school I went to. And overall, we emailed it to them because we couldn't go in person, but we sent it to the science classes. It was me, Lindy, and Allie. So yeah, that's what we did there. And <laughs> my SEAL experience was highly positive. If anyone's interested in joining SEAL, I would highly recommend it to anyone. I really enjoyed the community that was surrounding around SEAL and how we got to work together with people our own ages and how it just really allowed me to express your interests and for the first time truly advocate for what I enjoyed and what I believe in. So SEAL was a perfect opportunity for me to express this. And I just enjoyed kind of cleaning up my environment, making it safer and a uh, more cleaner and pretty place to be in. Okay, I'd like to say thank you all for listening to my presentation. And thank you, especially to the SEAL program and Clean Ocean Action for all the help throughout my program and for all the support they gave me. And let's just clean up our environment. <laughs> Questions? Well, you guys all have this, this, um, this theme of presenting to middle school. Mm -hmm. So, once you go off to school, when you go off to college, yeah. have you thought about passing your Instagram account um, to the next generation to let this save our Oh, absolutely. I feel if someone's interested and wants to take it over, that I could. That I feel who it that who I feel I can trust with posting and keeping up with this information. Of course, I pass it along since I most likely will not be in Monmouth County for college. So, of course, I'll pass it on to anyone who would want to take it over. Any other questions? What was your favorite submission? My favorite submission. There was a couple of funny ones. I like the snackies because. It just kind of brings back a load of nostalgia because there, there was a lot of ads for that at night when I was like secretly watching TV. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sorry, Mom and Dad. <laughs> um, also, there was a microfiber makeup cloth, which I thought was pretty cool, which is basically just kind of like a small towel that you can just pour the makeup remover on and take off your makeup, which I also thought was interesting. And there was just like, a, there's bamboo straws, which I thought was cool as well. Those were like just some of the highlights. Of course, there's more that I can't name off the top of my head, but those were definitely some of my favorites. And the toothbrush. <laughs> yes. Anything else?
Can you feel close to me? Oh, the competition is unfortunately over. <laughs> but next year, I'm sure you can. The toothbrush actually won one of the categories, as well as the snackies. Oh. And a, a bag, a reusable bag with uh, veggie straws in it also won. That's a W, baby. <laughs> I know, it's a dumb. <laughs> Um, but next year, anyone else? All right. <laughs> and last, but definitely not least, we have dry clinic. Okay. All right. <laughs> so my project name was reusing refill. So a little bit about me. I am uh, a junior at RBR. I take forensic science. That's a picture of the refractive light index. I recommend the class is cool. Um, my love for the environment stems from my love for travel. I've traveled to Greece, the Galapagos, Vienna, a lot of places, and they all have different environments. They're all awesome. And my love for leadership stemmed from the fact that I have two younger sisters and I want to set a great example for both of them. So the problem, there's way too much plastic. Like Jackie said, plastic utensils, there's plastic bags, there's plastic water bottles. I mainly tackle plastic water bottles and then not enough of these are reusable. Yes, you can refill a plastic water bottle, but how many times? Eventually it's going to end up in the garbage. Hopefully the recycling, but probably the garbage. Um, there's also a lack of education. A lot of people don't know how much plastic hurts the environment, especially plastic water bottles. And yeah. what is my project? Basically, it's mainly community-based. The main purpose was education. Um, I went to a fourth grade, I went to my uh, elementary school and I did a little project for the whole fourth grade class. And I had a little competition to see which class could refill the most water bottles. Now, every time I give them these little posters, um, shaped like water bottles, I try to be creative. And every time they refill the water bottle or brought in a reusable water bottle, they do a little tally mark. And this lasted through the entire month of April. And that's the basis of the project. The goal, to educate the kids, let them know that what they're doing has an impact and that they can help the environment with refilling the water bottle one to two times a day. Um, they can also take this and talk about it among their school, among their parents. I had parents come up to me and ask me if I was the one doing the water bottle project. Everyone seemed interested, which was a great plus. Also, it's good to stay hydrated. And when people <laughs> have the incentive, there's a great, the incentive was a pizza party. So whichever class won and refilled the most uh, water bottles got a pizza party. And what's better to a fourth grader than a pizza party? <laughs> so Miss Massey's class won with 197 refills. Mr. Hans had 183 refills. Miss Egidio had 153, and Miss Cooper had 49. Here's Aww. pictures. Um, this is the winning class. They were very excited. Now, what they learned after this, uh, after I left the pizza party, great experience. They all love me. <laughs> um, everyone seemed super interested because I sent out a survey. While I was there, I asked if they had any questions. Not only were they asking questions about the pizza, they were also asking questions about what they could do to further help the environment. Mm -hmm. I also asked them questions like stuff to get them involved, like, do you know how many water bottles are not recycled per year? Does anybody know? No. <laughs> the answer is 481.6 billion. That's not cool. <laughs> so these kids are so, they were ecstatic about the project, but they're also ecstatic to continue the project. I got emails from Ms. Nasty telling me <laughs> that after I took the, after I left, they were con uh, concerned as to where they were gonna track their water bottles because they were so <laughs> used to it, so excited about it. So I left the poster, let them keep going. Ms. Nasty told me she was gonna make more. Very exciting. Um, at least three to five students per class switched from plastic water bottles to reusable water bottles, which is a much better turnout than I thought for fourth graders. 
There's a picture of me and the fourth graders. I know it's like, where's Waldo? But I'm right here, <laughs> right in the back. Um, obviously very proud of the work they've done. Our reflection. I would love to create a community that not only is interested in a better future, but can work together to create this better future. And I think like what better, like Ali said, like what better to start than with young? They can not only spread the knowledge, they can grow and learn more knowledge and they're gonna grow up and use that knowledge. Um, everyone was involved and interested and that's all I can ask for. Um, it's also not hard, like using a reusable straw it makes you feel cool and put together. I think everyone should do it. Um, and problems are really, I watched a movie today about variables. Don't ask me why. But what I learned, what I took away from that is that there's more than one solution to every problem. So if you don't like using a reusable water bottle, you just don't have to use a plastic water, water bottle, drink out of a glass. There's a lot of ways to stay involved in the community and there's a lot of ways to help the community, especially environmentally which is what we do here at SEAL. No. Awesome. Oh, no. <laughs> so, um, let's see. So, the students that are interested in getting more involved, Yes. Do, you, um, do you have a plan for them? Or are you going to leave? Well, they're going into the middle school next year. And I'll be a senior in high school. And my sister will be a freshman in high school, meaning I won't have any input in the middle school. But I try to stay immersive with my past schools. I know the principal, the nurse, one of my great friends. Oh. So <laughs> I don't think I'll have an issue talking to them in the future. I also don't think the kids are going to forget. They seem very attentive and very interested in continuing the project. And I think that they're going to keep the project going. And if they don't, I'd love to come back the next year and either continue with the new fourth graders or progress the idea in the middle school. Maybe the seventh graders can take it to the fourth graders. As a friend knowledge among everyone. Everyone yes. needs to know. Did you get the pizza from a place who asked? Do you want your temple? Fun fact, I talked to Jackie Rogers about her project and made sure that we were going to eco-friendly. And we went to Gianni's, love Gianni's, go there, it's great. <laughs> Who knew fourth graders <coughs> made four pies of pizza? <laughs> Do you think that the kids learned that maybe in some future state, like in Euphoria, where we won't have plastic bottles for water and just um, reusable? I hope so. I mean, when I walked in there, there was one kid with a plastic water bottle and he told me that his mom gave it to him in a rush. He genuinely seemed sad about it. Aww. So I do hope, I do hope that these kids are gonna realize that there's just no need for plastic water bottles because it takes just as much time to buy and use a plastic water bottle than it does to have a reusable water bottle that you can call your own. And I mean, we're all pretty possessive. So who doesn't want something that's their own? That's all. Thank you. All right, and that concludes the SEAL project presentation. Let's give the group another round of applause. So now you know that I um, was even undertoning how wonderful all their projects are. They did such a fantastic job. I mean, I met them all back in October. So all of this progress was made over the past seven months or so. So it was really, really incredible to be in a position where I got to help advise, but also really just keep a structure for them. It was all them, truly. They are such an inspiring group and real environmental advocates and leaders. So I'm so proud of our SEAL class of 2021, 2022. I have some graduation certificates that I will officially hand out to you all. And then I have some prizes here that you can pick. We have some sandwiches in the kitchen that we'll grab after the short certificate ceremony. But again, thank you all for coming and tuning in. Um, it's just incredible. Yeah, I just wanted to wrap up. I, um, 
again, saying how in awe I am of these incredible young leaders and the work that they've done, the inspiration that they've done to the middle schoolers is particularly exciting because that's the pipeline to future SEALs. So it's great to know that there's a, a lot of young people that are now inspired by seeing you know, these high schoolers that think it's cool about, um, about caring about the environment. So many of the youngsters today have such anxiety about the environment um, and they have no outlet for that. And some of them feel very unusual or different um, that they care so much. And this is a, such a great venue. And I really have to thank Impact 100 Jersey Coast, um, which was, is an organization that funds really transformative projects. And they selected the Impact, Impact 100 Jersey Coast selected the SEAL program for funding, which gave us the basis from which to launch this program. And like I said, we did it under the most extenuating circumstances. But as you can tell, the enthusiasm that Kristen has, the, 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 just the belief in each one of the students that they can make the difference just really does make the difference. And so we're looking forward to you know, future years when we're really, really in person, really bringing the students together all the time. No more, no more Zoom time, just only real room time and getting them more engaged in, in activities of the community. So if any of you are interested in, in um, continuing on, I heard a couple of you, you know, I'm really excited about that. But again, this, um, this program will open up again in sort of, in, I think we'll start recruiting in August, right? So, um, or if any of you are interested in getting involved. And I just wanna, again, thank all of you, especially um, Lori Hohenleitner is here, who is a councilwoman in, in Atlantic Highlands and also a member of the um, Impact 100 Jersey Coast who's been a great inspiration for the students, letting them know as an elected official that, elect, that high school students rock the world. And of course the teachers, um, Mr. Hussey is here. I mean, the teachers are really our conduit to the students and they often make the recommendations. So it really is a holistic whole community. And it does also, of course, begin and end with the parents to give them the opportunity to be a part of this. So thank you all so very, very much.